Hello, friends. I would like to welcome you to worship at Church of the Good Shepherd. This is All Saints Sunday, when we will be uh, celebrating the lives of those who have completed their earthly journey and are now in God's heavenly home since last year uh, on All Saints Sunday 2022. And we will be doing that during the call to worship. I wanted to share a few announcements before we begin. Uh, this Tuesday night, we will be having our church conference, which is our annual gathering uh, with the presiding elder. And we will be doing some, the business of the church, we'll be celebrating our life together and our ministries and all are welcome. And that's going to be Tuesday evening, November the 7th at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, with November here, we are just a few weeks away from Advent, and so I want to let you know about a couple of adult Advent class opportunities. First of all, Sunday mornings at 9.30 in the meditation room downstairs, Janet McCarty will be leading an Advent study, and that is entitled, Awaiting the Already an Advent journey through the Gospels. And uh, that starts Sunday, November 26th. That's right after Thanksgiving. Uh, also, the Monday after Thanksgiving, I will start the Advent classes for Monday nights, 7 o'clock. And it will be a, a curriculum with a video by Rachel Billup, United Methodist pastor. And that curriculum is uh, entitled An Unlikely Advent, Extraordinary People of the Christmas Story. And we'll look at the biblical Christmas story and explore the lives of those who don't always get to be uh, understood fully or much time spent with them. So if you can be part of either of these, let the church office know or the teachers, and you can go online to get the books. Now, next Sunday, November 12th, we have a special offering for UMCOR to support our United Methodist Committee on Relief. That is our denomination's main outreach arm, and it helps locally, nationally, globally. And uh, as, as we support uh, UMCOR with our gifts on Sunday, uh, the, on the 12th, then the rest of the year, anything given by anybody for a hurricane, disaster, fire, uh, uh, refugees, 100% of those gifts goes directly to the need. So wanted to also say next Sunday, the 12th, is also our next fellowship brunch. That will be downstairs in the fellowship hall. Free will offering, uh, plan on that next Sunday, the 12th, 9.30 to 11 o'clock. Well, that's not all the things going on at Church of the Good Shepherd, but it's a few things that I just wanted to point out. And uh, I wanted to uh, have us hear this verse from the gospel according to John as a way to pivot and be prepared to worship in mind and body. Jesus said, the sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. And now, friends, let us listen to Cheryl Todd playing the prelude.
On this All Saints Sunday, let us now hear the call to worship. This morning we gather to celebrate the lives of persons that we name as saints. They have completed their physical lives here on earth. Some have touched us personally. Others have called into question the institutions and the structures of society. But all have shaken our being. They have been for us examples of love, wholeness, and justice. And so we celebrate these persons who we are about to name and their lives in all aspects of God's creation. Let us give thanks and praise to God for the lives of our loved ones who once dwelt upon this earth and now live in God's heavenly home. Among them, we lift up Ellen Butkus, Joan Crawford, Robert Leffel Jr., Nikki, the granddaughter of Donna Niece, Tom Cortauer, Neil Trinko, Luis Galindo, Bessie, the grandmother of Jeremy Johnson, Paul Baker, the brother of Bob Baker, Peg Duvall, Bert Nice, George Para, Janice Kozlerich, the mother of Judy Franz, Joe Middleton, Irma Kelly, sister of Bob Mead, Norma Jean Podschweit, sister of Stan McGraw, Dick Biritz, the brother of Judy Biritz, Fern Helen, mother of Jackie Herhalt, Barbara Penner, mother of Diane Baum, Edith Overstreet, Shirley LeClaire, and Elizabeth Borneman, mother of Tom Borneman. And we also lift up Marilyn Kowalski, the aunt of Pam Fabre. As we lift up these saints, we give thanks for their lives. And now, friends, let us hear from our Reborn Praise Band, Elaine Green, uh, singing for us, King of Heaven. Earth in shadow, restlessly hold, labors waiting in silent hope for the promise it longs to know what heaven holds. Then the angels in holy haste lift their anthem, your Savior lays in a manger in humble form, your King is born. The Prince of Heaven comes, angel choirs sound the call, for this babe wrapped in a cloth is the incarnate Word of God. All the kingdom and its power, resting now in this child, Prince of Heaven, Jesus holy. This means mercy in fullest form. Love 
loving kindness forevermore. Son of David and Son of God, He is Christ the Lord. Hail the Prince of Heaven comes, angel choirs sound the call, for this babe wrapped in a cloth is the Friends, let us now share joys and concerns from the congregation. And I would like to begin by lifting up Cheryl Todd, who uh, has uh, been healing and recovering from her broken shoulders. And uh, we give thanks for her medical team that has cared for her first at Rush Copley in Aurora, then at Rush Medical Center in Chicago. Uh, of course, we give thanks for her husband, Tom, who is right there by her side. And, and we ask that the Lord work through all of them and, and others yet to come in Cheryl's care team, that they may help her uh, through her time of pain and, uh, and her time of recovery. And so we, as we pray for Cheryl's comfort and for her healing, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Bob LeClaire and his family as they prepare for the memorial service for Bob's wife, Shirley. Uh, a date has now been set of Tuesday, November the 21st, 11 o'clock a.m. at the church. 
It will be preceded by a 10 a.m. visitation. A luncheon will follow the service. So if you can help with that, just contact the church office or Pat Rogerson or Kay Bonebreak. But let us lift up Bob LeClaire and his family as they grieve the death of Shirley and, uh, and prepare for her service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I would like to have us together lift up prayers for peace in places of war, such as Ukraine and in the Holy Land. And may the Lord's mercy come to all who suffer from fear and from violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We have some people from our congregation who are celebrating birthdays this week, and among them, I would like to lift up uh, uh, these names for Thanksgivings. We say happy birthday to B. Dunteman and to our deacon, Debbie Ingram. Happy birthday to Jim Bonebreak and Pat Herhalt. Happy birthday to Stan McGraw and Crystal Robinson. Happy birthday to Barb Schilling, to Dick Koloff. Carlene Lindo, and to Hal Lowe. And as we lift up all these brothers and sisters, we, uh, we ask for God's special blessings for this coming year of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
prayer of praise. The works of our hands are gifts of your mercy, O God. And all that we have are signs of your love. If we have strength, it is because you uplift us. When we have joy, it is on account of your grace. We praise you when you comfort us with Christ to intercede. Accept now our worship. May it be worthy of the care you show us. Amen. Friends, I would like to invite you to be in silent prayer now that we may share with the Lord those other prayers that are on our hearts, that are on our minds, people we know about, loved ones, friends, neighbors, colleagues, schoolmates, people that we have heard about on the news that we are concerned about. Uh, we lift up in prayer our own lives and our need to give thanks or ask for help from God's spirit. And so let us among all these prayers, lift them up to the Lord at this time. Gracious Lord, we come to you this day grateful for all the blessings that you have given us this past week. We come to worship in a, a mode of reflection as we think back of those times when our lives intersected with your spirit in ways that we could not deny. Perhaps we did not realize it first, but looking back, Lord, we see where you were interacting with us, guiding us, uh, protecting us, comforting us. We give you our thanks and our praise for faithfully uh, being there for us, Lord, for uh, showing us that your promises are true, that we can always count on your your loving and guiding presence. Dear Lord, we know that your presence is not only to make us feel better, but it is also to call us to be in ministry, to call us to do your work in this world, to make your kingdom that much more visible on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, as we seek to do this, we know along the way we... We will have our feelings hurt. We will be disappointed by others. Uh, we will uh, we will have feelings of of anger and frustration. And Lord, sometimes that it's hard to know what to do with all of those emotions. But we ask, Lord, that you would help us, help us to take those feelings toward a person or a group of people and ask for their forgiveness. Come to you, Lord, with that appeal for forgiveness. For as we forgive, so we are able to let go of that anger, let go of that sense of injustice, and put that in your hands, Lord. And we're able to forgive uh, whether or not the person repents, because, Lord, you forgive us before we even deserve it. And because of the grace that you give to us, Lord, that's all the reason that we need to give that grace to others. And so by your spirit, Lord, enable us to do this. Enable us to channel your grace into our own relationships, uh, as messy as they can be. For we are grateful that Nothing can stop you from entering into the messiness of our own lives. And so, Lord, with grateful hearts, grateful that you have uh, seen fit to forgive us, grateful that 
that we are called to be disciples of Jesus, grateful that we are invited to his table to commune, to receive uh, his body and his blood. Lord, in that sense of thanksgiving, we come to you. And as Jesus has taught us, so now we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us now give our attention to our One Accord Choir, directed by Jonathan Tater, accompanied by Sue Gilla, as they offer for us blessed assurance. First reading is from Ephesians 1, verse 3 through 10. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Gospel comes from Matthew 18, verses 21 through 35. When Peter came and said to him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, 
How often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, the one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, the Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat and said, Pay what you owe. But his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience, and I will pay you. But he refused, then went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do that to every one of you if you do not give your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I would like to thank our liturgist, Larry Leiches, for those scripture readings and for leading us in other ways this morning. And I have a sermon that I'd like to share before our sacrament of communion, and my sermon is entitled Undeserved Grace, and that really is, is the bottom line for the sacrament as well. Uh, the sacrament of communion is, uh, is all about the grace that the Lord gives us, not because we deserve it at all, but because God loves us. You know, I, I don't believe in luck, good luck or bad luck. Uh, unlike people in front of me in line at the gas station who are buying their lottery ticket, they're counting on, on luck. I don't believe in luck, but I have wondered about it in the form of good luck whenever I find just the perfect parking spot right in front of the store that I need to go to. And uh, it just makes me wonder, is there such a thing? And I wonder also about bad luck from time to time. You know, when I'm one of the favorite lyrics that uh, sometimes blues artists will put into a song is uh, something like, if it wasn't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Well, I pondered that when I noticed a brown envelope that was on my car windshield where I had parked it in the Metro train parking lot. I opened it up and I saw that it was a parking ticket for $20 sent with love from the city of Aurora. By the way, that was on Friday the 13th. But I was fuming with anger, mainly at myself, because I had prepaid the proper parking fee, but I had accidentally applied the payment for the parking space next to mine. Now, on a long shot, I went over to City Hall and I, I stopped by a few days later just to see if I could talk him into maybe bending the rules a little bit for me, finding a little mercy. And after I explained my situation and showed my dated receipt, uh, the woman behind the counter paused, looked up from her work. She looked me right in the eye and with all seriousness, she said, we can forgive you this time but not next time. This is a warning. I think she had been waiting all day to say that to somebody. Well, I refrained from reaching over the counter to give her a big hug, although that's what I felt like doing. And instead, I walked back to my car with more bounce in my step than I had previously. I was forgiven for my offense against the city of Aurora. And it felt so good. 
it was a nice surprise to find even some limited grace in the halls of government. And, and, and that's a big difference, you know, between the church and the state. Uh, for government to forgive is always an exception. For God and the church, however, it's the rule. You know, when Peter, the rock of the church, asked Jesus how many times he should forgive one who has sinned against him, uh, Peter suggested that a generous number would be seven. Remember last Sunday, we talked about forgiving someone seven times in one day. Now, the city of Aurora would say that's way too generous. But Jesus replied, seven times? Really, Peter? Not even close. Try 77 times. Of course, Jesus wasn't trying to test Peter's math skills here. Um, his point wasn't to forgive up until you reach 490 times. That is not what Jesus really was talking about. Jesus meant to forgive without limit because God's forgiveness for us is itself limitless. Paul teaches forgiveness to us not as a spiritual extra credit, but as a basic way of life for the Christian. In his letter to the Colossians, he says this, uh, you must make allowance for each other's faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. In today's Bible readings, we are not told that our forgiveness for others is based on the severity of their sin or even on their willingness to repent. So this takes it a, another step even beyond last week's lesson. Uh, it does not hinge on the willingness of the offender uh, to repent. Our decision to forgive is not based on uh, and any merit or any lack of merit from the offending party. We forgive just because. Just because God loves us enough that he forgives us through Jesus Christ. Because he first forgives us. So we are to forgive others. And though we resist and chafe at this idea, and I know we do, uh, no other reason to forgive is needed. That's enough. That's the way the Mennonites and the Amish understand it. Uh, I, I thought about that last month when I went back to my old school, uh, the Mennonite School Goshen College for my 40th class reunion in Northern Indiana. Forgiveness is more than just lip service for them. It's what I experienced. Uh, it, it, it's more than just singing about it in Sunday morning worship. So they do sing in beautiful four-part harmony, the whole congregation. Uh, the Mennonites and the Amish, I found, practice it in their lives because it's in their hearts by the grace of God. Now, back in 2006, I'm not sure if the nation was more stunned by the unprovoked murder of innocent Amish girls or if they were stunned more by the forgiveness that their families proclaimed for the murderer and his family. A local milk truck driver was the murderer back then. And, and, and you know, you don't see the word forgive making the headlines too often in the news, but this time it did. Uh, said one woman who understood the Amish belief system and way of life, um, the hurt is very great, but they don't balance the hurt with hate, not at all. So only hours after the shooting in that one-room schoolhouse in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, I should say, which included the self-inflicted death of the killer, family members of some of the dead children were reaching out to the wife and the children of the killer comforting them with words of forgiveness. 
Again, this was family members of some of the dead children reaching out to the wife and children of the killer. At the killer's own funeral, the Amish attendees outnumbered the non-Amish attendees. One of the grieving Amish families invited the family of the deceased murderer to the funeral of their murdered daughter. Yes, you heard me right. You know, that was not easy for those mourners. But when you practice a lifestyle of forgiveness, even in the little offenses of life, just as a way of life, uh, you're better poised to forgive when the offense and the hurt are much, much greater. You've already got that practice and that thought and that heart. Reverend Adam Hamilton, the United Methodist pastor who has authored many books that I have taught here, uh, wrote once about the key role that forgiveness plays in a marriage. Says Reverend Hamilton, uh, no marriage can survive without the words, I'm sorry, and I forgive you. Now, they work best in that order, but you don't have to hear repentance in order to offer forgiveness as the Amish believed, which led them to forgive the killer of their children. How many times in our marriages do we withhold the words or actions of forgiveness because you want your spouse to feel your wrath for a while? We withhold forgiveness for the offenses of sharp words of criticism or for neglect of household duties, or for embarrassing the other in public. And of course, uh, we withhold forgiveness uh, because of the offense of forgetting a birthday or an anniversary. Those are always occasions where the offended party feels so justified in their anger and only wants to hold on to it for a while longer. The consequence of offering forgiveness is not only to benefit the offender, but also to benefit the one who has been hurt. This is so important to understand. Says Reverend Hamilton, when you choose to harbor bitterness and resentment, you destroy your own soul and you miss an opportunity to transform another person by the power of grace, end of quote. Philip Yancey tells an incredible story about a victimized Jewish man in Lincoln, Nebraska, who did not miss an opportunity to transform another person by the power of God's grace. This, this Jewish man, a leader in his local synagogue, uh, received hate literature at his home from the local grand dragon of the Ku Klux Klan. The KKK leader mocked the Jewish faith, uh, denied that the Holocaust had ever happened, and threatened that Jewish man's family, and was also, he said, preparing to bomb their synagogue. Well, for every act of hate, the Jewish man and his family offered an act of love. The KKK man showed no sign of remorse, but the Jewish family continued to bless rather than curse this man who hated them. Many years later, the failing health of the KKK leader caused him to be very dependent upon others. The Jewish leader at this point invited that man into his home to care for him. And the hidden transformation of life finally became apparent when that man destroyed his hate propaganda. He took down his Nazi flags and he repeatedly asked for forgiveness from that Jewish family who now was caring for him in a genuine way. Said the former Grand Dragon of the KKK, they showed me such love that I couldn't help but love them back. 
That's the powers of God's love and amazing grace at work that we cannot afford to ignore. We got to give God's grace an opportunity to bloom like that. Adding to our anxieties about the superpowers getting involved in the war in Ukraine, we are now worried and grieving over the war in Israel, in, in which Israel is uh, retaliating for a Hamas attack, uh, thereby uh, Israel is invading the Gaza Strip, where many, many millions of Palestinians live. Uh, it's a piece of real estate that's only seven miles wide and no longer than the distance between Oswego and Elgin. That's the territory we're talking about is the Gaza Strip. We so often hear about the violence of extremists on each side of the conflict, but we don't often hear about individuals who have had a long history of reaching out to their supposed enemies to demonstrate hope and reconciliation. That doesn't always make the news. Like years before our current war in the Middle East, for example, there was an attack on northern Israel by the Arab group Hezbollah, which left two Israeli soldiers dead. Now, in the midst of grief shared by the soldiers' families, the brother of one of the dead Israelis asked doctors to donate his brother's eyes to somebody in need. The surviving brother was shown a long list of people who were waiting for an eye donor. Included in that list was the name of an Arab man, Nicola Elias, who was blind in one eye and had lost most of his vision in the other eye. Amazingly, the grieving Jewish brother chose that Arab man to receive the eye donation. Even while doctors were then performing that surgery, the transplant, the hospital ward where they worked was hit by a rocket missile. The doctors were forced to finish the operation in the hospital basement, but they were successful. When the Arab man, Nicola, was later told that his new eye came from a Jewish man who had been killed by a missile sent by the Arab group Hezbollah. He was confused. It did not make sense in his world of long-held bitterness and violence between both sides. As he recovered from surgery and was able to see again, miracle of miracles, he wanted to meet the surviving Jewish brother. An emotional meeting was held. Phone numbers were exchanged. And the gift of God's grace was received by each man as an act of life and hope that grew out of an act of death and hatred. And this, I suggest, is the even greater miracle that happened here. Again, I don't believe in luck, but I do believe in blessings and that God wants to bless us if we're open to it and if we're willing to be a blessing for others. That's so important. One of the most powerful ways that we can bless others is to offer forgiveness even as we non-violently find ways to keep them accountable for their actions. And one of the most powerful ways that God has blessed us has been to offer us forgiveness for our sins, though we don't deserve it. We know that through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, we learn what is important to God. And forgiveness is at the top of that list because God forgives us through the sacrificial death of Jesus. We are expected to forgive others. Don't waste your time thinking you're taking the moral high road by rejecting the offenders whom you have encountered. 
Uh, don't withhold your forgiveness until the offender proves themselves worthy of your forgiveness. And, and don't spend your days nurturing a grudge for something that happened yesterday or this summer or 10 years ago. Friends, let go and give it to God. Ask God to replace your bitterness with forgiveness, your hatred with love, to replace your hurt with healing. Then how much more meaningful will your prayer be when you say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us? We don't need to be superhuman to forgive, my friends. You only need to be super thankful for God's grace through Jesus, who has already forgiven us. All praise be to God. Let us now prepare to receive God's grace in the form of Holy Communion on this All Saints Sunday. And friends, as we prepare ourselves, uh, we again remember the great acts of grace that God has done in the lives of our faith ancestors and in our own lives, including the forgiveness of sins. And so as we have confessed to the Lord uh, those sins that we are asking to be forgiven, we approach the altar with confidence as we remember Jesus in the upper room, when he took that loaf of bread in front of the disciples and he broke it in their midst, saying, this is my blood offered to you. Take and eat of it, all of you, and do so in remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup gave thanks to his Father in heaven and said, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. A drink of it, all of you, and do so in remembrance of me. If you have not yet gotten your elements, you may pause the service and get the bread and the fruit of the vine and then come back and rejoin uh, but as always, uh, this is open to all who, who love the Lord and wherever you're at on your spiritual journey. And so we always practice an open communion table in this and every United Methodist Church. And so if you are now ready, uh, let us take the bread together and receive the body of Christ. Amen. And then following the invitation of Jesus, our host, let us receive the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we do celebrate the fact that you have indeed come to us and you have initiated the act of forgiveness. Gracious Lord, we, we come to you grateful for your forgiveness. We come to you with remorse for leaning upon our will more than your will. But we also come together with thanksgiving for the fresh start that you offer all of us. And Lord, may that gratefulness spill over into our relationships with others in our life as well, that we may also share your grace with them. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Thank you so much for being with us to worship on this All Saints Sunday. And I pray that uh, that you are lifted up by God's grace during the service and that you will feel uh, God's presence with you as you continue through your week. And friends, uh, I want to thank, uh, thank all of our worship leaders for helping our singers, our musicians, and Jesse Livingston, our producer as well. And, uh, and as we leave this time of worship, may we do so knowing that uh, the Lord is reaching out to us with the peace of Christ this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>